everyone, happy December. It's Bethany, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new and joining for the first time, be sure to hit subscribe if you like what you're seeing here and just keep crafting along with us. So in this video, I am crafting for Christmas. I'm gonna do a bunch of little Christmas crafts that I've been wanting to do and that have been on my little to-do list. And usually you see me crafting late at night, but I went ahead and grabbed a coffee because it's early morning here, not too early, but it's not midnight when I'm usually crafting. So I grabbed a little peppermint mocha. It's my favorite for this holiday season. So I grabbed one of those because I just love being warm and cozy during Christmas crafts and it really just kind of sets the mood. So you might decide to pour yourself something similar, but whatever you do, just enjoy this video. We have the heat press on. I'm going to be making a couple of fun, cute things for the girls. And then I have a lot of little crafts. So I'm really excited to share what I'm going to be doing today. Plus I did purchase a couple little organizational tools for my craft room. So I'm going to share those with you as well. I have been waiting to buy them and I finally took the plunge and I am 110% happy with them. So I'm going to inspire you with what I got and maybe you'll like them too. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the first craft. I hope you enjoy this little video today. If you do, give it a thumbs up and let me know which one was your favorite. All right, let's get started with the first craft. Okay, so for our first craft, I'm going to be making this cute little sled decor. I found it at the Target little dollar stop, that little bullseye playground, and it was $3. It came in a bare wood, but I decided to add a couple layers of chalk paint to it, and I used a red chalk paint. I'm not completely in love with the color. Um, I tend to be a little bit pickier about my red colors. I like them to be more on the burgundy side instead of like stop sign red, um, and this isn't necessarily stop sign red, but it's a, it was a little redder than I want it to be, but you know what? It's still cute, and I'm going to go with it. I didn't have time to grab more paint, so I'm going to go ahead and add a cute little SVG to this. Now, before I get started, I was going to tell you about some cute little tool caddies and organizers that I bought for my craft room. So I've had these in my cart for probably at least three months and one of the presses is ready. So I finally purchased them and I am so happy with them. So this is the first one that I purchased. It is a really nice little organizer that holds the little tools. If you have seen my craft room tour, my tools are usually on a pegboard near me, which are really close enough, but I was really looking for something that I could have just right on my desk as well. So I purchased this. It has lots of different storage options. You can put things in the side. I decided to put my little scrapers in the front, a pair of scissors, and then just a little whole um, variety of weeding tools and accessories that will help me in uh, just my general crafting. So I put those in the back and I was really impressed with it. You can get it in a variety of colors. Of course, it doesn't shock you that I wanted this blush color. It's so pretty. And then I also got this pen organizer. So it is the same company and I got it in the blush pink as well. And I also got a third thing and I will show you later in the video what that is. So this holds all of my pens. I really love how this turned out. And then it also holds my blades. Plus it has a spot for that foil tool plus the little tips in there. And I am so happy with how these turned out and how I received them. They are beautiful. I, again, have had them in my cart for forever and I finally just hit the buy button and I'm so happy I did. So I'll link them down below in case you've been looking for something to kind of organize your space as well, but I am very happy with them and I just wanted to inspire you with them as well. So let's go ahead and just grab this little SVG. I'm going to use my paper transfer tape and I'm going to place it right on my little design here and then we'll get it onto this little sled. So it does come with a little rope. So you could use this in the middle of a wreath. I think that would be adorable. So that is just one option for how you could style this as decor around your house. I'm gonna be doing a little wreath sign later in this tutorial, so hold on for that. But that was another idea that you could do. Of course, you could just use it for anything that you wish. Okay, so I'm gonna test out how efficient this kind of makes me today. I'm really loving it so far. Okay, so now I'm just going to scrape down the front and the back. Let me know if you purchased anything fun crafting related for yourself for Black Friday. Um, I know it was a great time to buy Christmas gifts for others too, but did you snag anything for your craft room or any craft supplies? Oops, everybody's banging around upstairs playing. You might hear some things in the background today. Everybody is just having fun. 
while I am down here in my little workshop. North Pole. I call it the North Pole during the Christmas time because I feel like I'm doing so many fun Christmas things. Okay. Now I'm going to take my time. So I've been mentioning this in every video. So if you are one of my tried and true friends that watches all of my videos, which I know most of you are, um, and I appreciate you guys so much, um, but I'll say it again. I'm using a removable just in case you're brand new. Uh, removable vinyl is perfectly fine for crafts like this when you're just making decor, things that you know are just little signs for your house or aren't going to be getting wet. Of course, you would want to use a permanent if you are doing a any type of drinkware that's going to get wet or anything that will be going outside, then you would definitely want to opt for a permanent vinyl. And I'm just taking my time here. It's wanting to be a little tricky coming off of that carrier sheet. I'll link this design down below. It is so cute. And you could do a multitude of things with this. I That's one of my favorite things about SVGs is that Two people could look at the exact same thing and be inspired in different ways. So I really liked this for this little sled, but you could make a shirt. You could put this on a little wine bag. You could put this on a gift bag. Um, so I love that you could purchase something one time and then be inspired to do multiple things with it. I'm missing one right here. I need to come back up and there we go. Grab that and I think I got everything else. Okay. And almost done. It's real life crafting here. So lately you have been telling me in the comments that you really love when I leave in some of the struggles and the mistakes that I make in crafting. So I'm really happy about that because it has actually helped me when filming to not be so hard on myself if that's not you know, coming out the way I wanted or if I'm struggling a little bit more. So I thank you for telling me that because I feel like I can just leave those things in and I know that they'll be appreciated or all of the above. So let me just lay this down, I'm trying to get it exactly where I'd like it. And so I appreciate that you guys like authentic crafting because you know what? That's just real life over here. Okay. And everybody's transfer tape or no, everybody's vinyl always can be a stinker at times coming off of that carrier sheet. Okay, there we go. Just rubbing that down really well with my scraper. And then I really think this is gonna be so pretty in terms of contrast against that red paint. Oh, look how pretty. So nice. Okay, so again, you could put this in the middle of a wreath for your door, or you could really just prop it up as decor, like maybe on your mantle or anything that you'd like. I think it turned out really sweet. And isn't that SVG so fun? I got it a little bit too far to the left, but you know, that's okay. I still love it so much. But I think that turned out really cute. Very inexpensive. So it was $3. I added a little bit of paint that I had had in my craft space and then some vinyl and it turned into something completely different. So you could take this in any direction. You could put any saying on there or you could really just paint it and do something plain and nice as well. But I love this idea. Let me know how you would be inspired with this little sled and be sure to look for them at Target because they are so sweet and I just feel like they're the perfect little decor for this holiday season. Okay, let's move on to our next little craft. Okay, so keeping my little craft space tidy here, I am going to do a little heat press craft here and I'm going to be doing my little door sign. So I have my bow already made. Now, you guys have really enjoyed the bows I've been doing lately, so I did do a tutorial on how to make your own little bow out of ribbon, so be sure to check that out. I'll link it in the top right corner of this video, so if you'd like to make one of your own and stop buying them then you can do that as well so I have my bow pre-made I just went ahead and did it because I've already taught you how to do it and it was just quicker that way and then I have my little wood round now I've been completely in love with these little skinny wood rounds because what I like to do is I like to layer them on my wreath and 
part in the tap dancing upstairs you guys know everybody loves to play especially when I'm crafting <laughs> so anyway I love these little skinny rounds because I feel like they are easy to put on um, right before a or right in front of a wreath and then you can have a beautiful wreath around but this kind of sets in the middle of it but it also just adds kind of a layering effect and it's so so pretty so I'm gonna go ahead and make my little sign for you today i'm going to put some htv on here so i grabbed some glitter htv or iron on those terms are the same in case you're wondering and i am going to just put this on there i think it's gonna be pretty now most of you from time to time I get asked why I'm doing HTV on wood and honestly it's because number one it's so easy you can pick it up and put it down as many times as you want and it's a little bit more forgiving than vinyl and number two whenever I do glitter I like to use HTV I do not like glitter vinyl I feel like it's just a stinker to work with so glitter HTV is so easy so whenever I want that beautiful glitter look I just opt to use an HTV instead okay so one other thing is I did paint this with my favorite chalk paint that I'll link down below. I think I added two layers and otherwise it's just this bare wood. I believe this was in a three pack at Hobby Lobby. I think this is my third that I've made this season. I did a fall, a Halloween, and then now a Christmas one. So I love that it comes in a pack. They're very inexpensive and they're easy and thin to store. This one looks a little bit warped, but that's totally fine because it's just going to be layered on that wreath. But they're very expensive and easy to store, which is really big for me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually going to add my little ribbon hanger first. So the reason I'm gonna do that first is because then I can know exactly the top and then I can do my SVG next. Should I do that first? I don't, I think I can do that without the, I'm trying to think. Okay, pause. I'm going to do it second only because the next step is going to be doing my heat press and I don't want the heat press to um, reheat the hot glue because I'm going to apply this with hot glue. So pardon me, but I'm just walking you through my thought process there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to preheat that wood a little bit. So I'm going to use my 9x9 Easy Press. I'm going to take a cute quick little sip of this really quick and enjoy this before it gets cold because you know a mama... A mama has to love iced coffee because she never gets warm coffee anymore, right? Okay, let me grab my press, bring it in. So I'm just using the nine by nine easy press. I'm just gonna preheat that wood just a little bit and it's telling me it's time or it's gonna go back to sleep. Okay, so just a little bit of warmth there. Okay, and I just have some parchment paper that I'm placing as a barrier just to protect the paint protect my press. Now I'm just going to lay down my iron on. Isn't this beautiful? So pretty. Making sure everything is where it needs to be. Keeping my desk tidy because those little caddies are going to help me out, right? I feel like I'm tidy in general, although I did a poll. Did you guys see my poll? I wanted to know how your craft spaces were going because mine has been a little bit crazy lately as as natural as that would be during this time of year just because I feel like we're churning out a lot of gifts and a lot of fun decor so okay I have it placed if you don't like how it's placed the best thing about iron on is that you can just pull this up and you can lay it down again this has um, this does have a sticky back so it is really forgiving and um, but also when you lay it down it stays put Okay, so now I'm gonna place my parchment paper right back over and I'm gonna heat that back up. I'm trying to make sure I cover the entire thing. And I'm doing 300 for 40 seconds and I'm gonna give that a little bit of pressure with my hands. And then, I love how these turn out. I love the glitter too because in the sunlight, when the sun just kind of peeks on the front door, it just gives it a really pretty look. And you know if you've been crafting me for a while that I'm tiptoeing into the world of glitter because loose glitter is a huge no-no in my craft room. Although I did get myself a glitter vacuum in hopes that I would give it a try, but it just makes me a little anxious because I don't like, I don't like mess. Okay, but the glitter iron-on is I've been using, you know I've been using it so much lately because it's just so fun. Okay, there's a couple parts where it didn't quite 
get up here. Let's see. Oh, or down here. I think my press wasn't quite over the entire thing. So let me go ahead and reheat that top part. My wood piece is also, I'm going to put some, a lot of pressure. My wood piece is also a little bit warped and not completely flat. So that could be giving me a little bit of problems here, trying to get a really flat press. So you could also, if you have the mini, the little easy press mini, you could just do little spot fixes on here. I'm, I noticed most of the top was kind of having an issue. So I'm going to re repress that entire thing. And then I think I need to do a little bit down at the bottom, but this side looks good. Putting all my, all my little muscle that I don't have into that. Okay. So I'm just going to spot check and I'm going to go around and just kind of double check. I need a little bit there and then a lot of it here. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. You know what? This is not laying flat and I feel like I'm just going to fight with it more if I don't just grab my little mini because it's not completely, do you see how this wood is a little bit curved? My other pieces weren't like that. Let's see if you can see. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. So I'm just going to grab my little mini press and I'm going to go ahead and just do it that way because then I can just get it really tight in there. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go ahead and just get this plugged in. I'll unplug this one and we'll be good to go. I've done these so many times, so it does work. And usually it works the first time, but I think it might have warped a little bit when I did the paint. And it would be helpful if I turned that on. Okay, um, so I'll just do that and it will be It'll be really good. In the meantime, I'm just going to check. It kind of needs it all the way around. But since I'm not working with a flat surface, I'm kind of playing an unfair game with my nice flat press here because it's not really wanting to be super flat. But once on the wreath, it's I don't it's so minimal that I'm not going to worry about it. It'll be just fine. Okay, I'm going to fast forward a second until this gets nice and warm and then I'll finish this up. Put my hanger and my bow on here and then we'll be on to our next fun craft. I'll just enjoy my coffee in the meantime. So when using the mini, know that you want to move it. Usually presses are, you know, you keep them very still, but this little mini press was intended to move. So you're just gonna move it around, give it some even heat and even pressure. I'm already feeling like this is much more successful because I can just allow my little press to take on the curve of the sign. And then I can get just little focus presses around those little areas that need a little bit more help. Okay, I'm just adding a little bit of pressure there. And I can just spot check it wherever it needs it. Being careful, it does get really hot. But this is gonna do the trick. I love this little mini. Let me know what your favorite thing to do with this little mini is. It's so helpful. Okay, I think that that worked really well. So let me just place this over here. It looks great. And perfect. Yep. Oh, it looks really good. One little spot on the O. One tiny little spot. So because it's so small, I can just say that I'll work right on that O without reheating all of it. I also think this might be a cool peel, so I probably should wait a little bit, but there we go. Okay, it looks so good. And then once you get that liner off, you can really appreciate the glitter. How pretty. 
And if you find that you have anything that's coming up, just put this little liner back down and then give it some more heat. But it did a great job. I'm glad that I thought of that little mini and I hope that was helpful, you, helpful to you. Um, sorry, I had to change lanes there real quick, but I also really like to show you kind of my thought process of if something's not working, how to quickly think through something and fix it on the spot. So let's go ahead and make the little door hanger for the back and I like mine to be a little bit longer just because of the way I'm going to be placing it on my door in front of a wreath okay so I got both of these um ribbons oh I don't have very much left oh I've been using this a lot this season okay so I bought them both at Hobby Lobby I love this I feel like it's very um almost candy cane ish so I thought that was really fun as well but I like doing two different ones because I just like the look of sort of a mismatched look for my wreath I think it just adds a little bit of fun okay so I'm just letting my eye know where I'd like that to be I think that looks good I'm gonna turn this around and I'm going to grab my hot glue and just dab some glue there. Let that first one fall. And then let the second one. Okay, I need to grab my little finger protectors. Got these at Dollar Tree and they have really helped when I, when I remember to grab them. <laughs> they really helped kind of protect my fingers. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that is nice and dry. And then I'll just add my bow right here. Oh, that's gonna be so cute. Okay, so just getting an idea of where I'd like that. I'm gonna bring it up pretty high. That way I can see a little bit more of those berries coming down. And then after I'm done attaching it, I just add a lot of glue here. Um, and use whatever adhesive you find the best. I really love hot glue and I've liked my results with it. So that's what I'm sticking with. Um, but after I get this on there, I will fluff that bow how I like it. That looks really cute. That file is cute. I'll link this SVG down below as well. Again, you could use this for anything. It would make a really cute shirt. It would make a really cute little wooden sign as well. If you didn't want it as a, a wood wreath sign, you could do it as indoor home decor as well. So now I'm just gonna fluff these little bows or the little pieces of the bow, how I'd like them. And then I really love that. Here is my final little wreath. And again, I'll just put it in front of my little berry wreath that's on the door and I think it's gonna look really cute. Very, very fun and festive. And again, that glitter with the sunshine is just pretty magical in my opinion. Okay, let's go on to our next craft. I think my heat press is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I can um, get that turned off because it's getting mighty warm in here. Okay, so my next little craft, I have been wanting to do this for about a year now and I'm embarrassed to say I've had these little aprons for a, a just about a year or maybe even longer for my girls. Luckily they still fit, but I thought these would be so cute for Christmas time. Originally I was going to make these for their little art station and have them have little art aprons for when they paint and stuff, but they're so inexpensive. I think I'll probably buy them again for just year round use for when they're doing arts and crafts. But now that cookie season is upon us, I grabbed these because I really wanted to make them something fun to wear while we are baking cookies. I'm looking right in this G and I realized I didn't weed out the middle of it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly. And because I have my little caddy here, I can just grab that. I'm so glad I bought these. Ugh makes my heart so happy. I love it when you've been looking at something for so long and then once you get it, you love it even more and that just makes it so worth it. Okay, so anyway, look at the bottom. It's a little ruffle bottom. These are from Hobby Lobby and then it has a cute little pocket. In fact, you could also do some sort of cute iron on on the pocket as well. I think that would be darling. So I'm going to just put Baking Spirits Bright on the front of these little aprons. I thought this would be fun for when we're making Christmas cookies this year and I'll link this SVG down in the description box as well. So let's go ahead and head to the heat press and I'm going to go ahead and get these pressed on these little aprons and I think the girls will be really surprised by them. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and preheat 
my apron really quickly just to remove the wrinkles as best I can. Also, I'm going to do that to test my pressure on my, uh, my heat press and then to also just ensure there's no moisture in the garment. If there's moisture in there, then it doesn't tend to press as well or successfully. So we want to make sure that that iron-on gets really on there. I didn't mention I am using that same glitter iron-on that I used for my door sign in the previous craft. Well, that did really well. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly just remove any lint. And I'm going to put that maybe an inch and a half to two inches below. I think that looks good to my eye. Okay, there we go. You can measure if you'd like. That looks really good. We're not working with a lot of area there. So my eyeball, I feel like, is more accurate than taking the time to measure it in this, in this case, I think it would be. So I'm just gonna press it on there. And then it's gonna go for 30 seconds. And I think these are gonna turn out so cute. I love the ruffle. I wish they had it in my size. I need to find a ruffle apron. I think that's just adorable. What kind of cookies are you all making this year? I love this time of year. So good. Okay, there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna let that cool for just a second. There we go, let me see, just test it. Oh, it looks really good. Oh, so sweet. Okay, everything laid down perfect. I'm just gonna give it an extra little zap and really just about five seconds and then we'll move on to the next one. So quick and easy. And I love that you can take this apron and run in any direction with it. I think when I do the girls um, craft ones, I might do their monogram on it with maybe a really fun floral iron on. I think that would be really fun. I love that. Okay, let me do the next one really quickly. And, and I'll show you a close up of them when I'm done. These are so sweet. Okay. So lather, rinse, repeat, the exact same thing and the exact same process that I did last time. So I'll just preheat really quickly, grab my iron on, make sure that I got all of the pieces off. Okay. That was a little longer of a preheat, but that's okay. Then just making sure there's no lint or anything that's gonna prevent my iron on from laying down just perfectly. Okay. I feel like I need one now too. just a sec. Lays down so nice. And then it has that cute glitter effect. I just love that. Love it so much. Okay, giving it just a little bit more heat. Not because it didn't lay down perfectly, but sometimes I feel like when you pull up that liner, it can be a little harsh on the iron-on. So I just like to give it a little bit more. And there we go. Okay. I'm going to turn this off so it's not too warm in here. Okay, and here we go. How sweet did these turn out? I love the glitter. It's just so pretty. I just love that. And I love all the little embellishments, the little cookies and little gingerbread man with the bow tie. So pretty. So I'll link this um, file down below as well if you want to be inspired. I think on the little description of the SVG, they have it on a pot holder, which would be adorable as well. So if you wanted to do those little pot holder gifts where you add the cookie mix and the little spatula, then this would be the perfect, perfect SVG for that. Also because it's more square in nature, meaning it's just about as um, 
wide as it is tall, so it would look really good on a oven mitt or um, it's, it's a pot holder, a pot holder, I believe. Anyway, um, I think that would be so sweet as well. So another way that you could run in a different direction with this as well. Also, you could do a little tea towel. That would be sweet too. Okay, let's move on to our next little craft. Okay, so I purchased these little houses from Target. They came in a little three pack and I thought they were so, so cute. They were just a natural wood, just like you'd see on the back. And I can't remember the price, but they were obviously priced just right to completely jump into my cart. And I just love them. So I put a little white chalk paint. I did two layers and I put that on the top. Again, I leave the sides bare because I just love that look personally and I thought they'd be so cute now I purchased these in October and I was originally thinking about doing something for Halloween with them because I think that would be cute as well to do maybe little ghosts or something but then with the little chimneys and everything I just decided to tuck them away for Christmas because I thought they'd probably be a really cute Christmas idea as well so I'm gonna do ho 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 on here. I thought that would be so cute. I we did one of them. Also, I wanted to share. I left this on here because I wanted to show um, something that I've learned since starting. When I first started, if you've seen my craft room tour, I like to store my vinyl in rolls, and I still do. I find it just better personally for me because I can open the drawer. I can see all the colors at once. It's easier for me than shifting through sheets of. Um, vinyl because I just like to visually see everything all at one time but when I first started when I would roll them up I would apply just tape regular tape to them and it's really not only hard to get off but also once you get it off it leaves a residue on the vinyl so I left this here because I wanted to show you now my SVG stops here but I wanted to show you if you like to roll up your vinyl Someone said to use transfer tape, which is genius, absolutely genius. Also, one thing that I use is I use washi tape because it has a little bit less of a tack on it. So it's just very less, very much less sticky, if that makes sense. Um, and it doesn't leave that residue. So I have switched to using a washi tape when I am rolling up and needing to secure my rolls of vinyl. So I hope that makes sense to you, but I wanted to, I left this on here because I wanted to remind myself to tell you that if you do like to store your vinyl rolls that way, then make sure you're thinking through what you're taping them with. I think the transfer tape idea is wonderful as well. Okay, plus you could use, you know, old transfer tape too. So if you're someone who really likes to reuse that transfer tape, keep a little stash of it for securing your vinyl. I'll do my best to link the fonts that I used down below. I used three different ones because I just wanted it to look really fun and eclectic. And then this is a shimmer vinyl. This isn't a glitter vinyl because I was just telling you I don't like the glitter vinyl. I, I just struggle with it so much. This is a shimmer vinyl and I very much love it because it's so much easier to weed and work with most of the time. <laughs> Although it's proving to be proving to be easy right now. Okay, get the little dot to the exclamation point there and the middle of O. Okay, there we go. So let's see, I want to just kind of see which one I would like where. I do want this little squatty one on the short, short one. And I think the other two look good just as so. Okay, so I'm gonna use my masking paper transfer tape and place these little pieces here. Now you could reuse one piece for all if you'd like. So take that step if you would like to. And scissors, there we go. I need to get another set of um, weeding tools because I have been using mine so much that and self-admittedly I've been using them for things I shouldn't and I've been bending them accidentally oops but I saw that they were um on sale I can't remember 
So I just, I like, when I, whenever I see them on sale, I like to grab a couple just because eventually they do kind of start bending a little bit. And usually I only use them for weeding, but sometimes during the holiday season, I get a little crazy and use them to open paint and <laughs> use them to, you know, bend things and do as I say, not as I do. Usually I'm much more nice with my tools, but we each, we each have our moments, right? Okay, so let's place these. I think these will look really pretty on the mantle. So sweet. Or even on a, you can save that transfer tape, even on your window seal I, or window sill, I think that would look really, really pretty as well. Anything you'd like, because they're just a nice little skinny design and nice little skinny piece of decor. I'm gonna make sure that I kind of get, let's see, do I want that that low or do I want it to be a little higher? I was thinking maybe I would have them all the same from the bottom, but I think I like it actually being more centered individually than having them all kind of match. Plus with the mismatched fonts, I think that that, yeah, I like that. I think it looks good. Okay, I think that looks nice. Let me know how you would be inspired with these cute little houses okay I think I'll put them on our mantle well our stockings are kind of I actually have little stocking holders that are houses so I think that would be too much so maybe these will go on my kitchen windowsill okay there we go how sweet are these I love this okay organize and ho 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 I love that I think that's really cute and I love the mismatched fonts because I think it just makes it look really really fun okay so let me know how you'd be inspired with these little houses I think they're just darling and let's go ahead and move on to our next little craft okay the next thing I want to do is I found this cute little snow globe kit at Dollar Tree and I thought it was so cute so I wanted to go ahead and make something fun for the kids. I also got the snow. Let me grab that. The faux snow which is really pretty. It has a glitter effect in there too um, and I or kind of like a holographic effect in there. Some of those little specks are really really pretty and glittery. So I found the faux snow there. I found the little globe and then I also got the little trees at Michael's and I purchased these last year because I was going to do a little mason jar snow globe last year but do you guys remember last year I was crafting every single day for it was crazy and I was pregnant last year I don't know really what I was thinking I'm taking a little bit slower this year because I'm trying to slow down just a little bit and um just enjoy this season but I purchased these last year. I'm sure they still have them. They're in the little miniatures section. And so I'm just going to make a cute little snow globe. Now you can do it inside. It came with directions if you wanted to do the water. And I think it even said baby oil inside. I think that's what I read, but be sure to research yourself if you wanted to add the water effect. I am simply going to have it dry inside. Um, that's just how I am going to prefer to do it this year, but go ahead and take the necessary steps that you would like if you want to do something different. So the first thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to add the little trees to the base. So Let's see, I think they actually go on this. So they have a little plug if you are going to do the water. That way it's kind of double sealed and gives you a little bit more assurance that this is going to stay an enjoyable little craft. So you would plug it with this and then you would put this in there. I am, even though I'm not doing the little um, wet mixture inside, I'm still gonna use this because I just want that assurance that everything is going to stay nice and clean. So. I'm gonna grab some trees. You can grab any type of little miniatures that you would like. I also had some, 
let's see I had some little deer last year oh I put them on the little reindeer feed jars I'll link that tutorial up in the corner if you remember I did little reindeer feed jars they were so cute little things that you would um, just place out on your lawn the night before Christmas so that the little reindeer could have something to eat I'm just gonna test to see if that will that's really cute I think I like to do stuff in threes, but, oh, I found a third. I was going to say, I don't want to do all the same height. And one thing I like about this is that that snow is going to get stuck on these little trees. Okay, so sorry you can't really see it because I can't obviously tip it until it's glued. So let me glue this. I'm just going to use some hot glue. But again, you could put little reindeer in here too, make a little woodland uh, area scene is what I'm trying to say so I'm gonna do it on this but anyway you could do it on that as well but I kind of like how this will be kind of raised up inside of the globe okay adding my little embellishments and then I'll lift it up so you can see there we go and I did three different heights of trees because I think that visually will just look the best. And the smaller of the two are just barely, barely different. But how cute is this? And they have little faux snow speckles on them already, but so pretty. And I have some extras, so I could even go back to Dollar Tree and, and get another one and do another one as well. These would make really cute little gifts as well. Okay, the next step is adding the snow. So I'm just going to use, oh, you know what? I'm going to share with you. This is the other thing that I purchased, and this is one of the things I was most excited for when purchasing this little um, set. This is for coffee mugs. So when you are adding vinyl to mugs or a tumbler, anything, and you don't want it rolling around your table, you can use something like this. It's like a little cradle, and it will cradle your mug or tumbler in there, but it also works for things like this. They also put little sticky rubber sticky things on here so that it really grips it well. So I really like that. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for the next step. Um, but actually, I can use it right now just to hold that steady. So I'm not going to do a mug in this tutorial, but I will show you coming up how you can use that. It's obviously very self-explanatory, so I think you get the point, but... You could use it for ornaments as well. I'm gonna do ornaments in, ooh, them already, I'm already making a mess. <gasps> Breathe. I wonder if my little glitter thing could pick this up, my little glitter vacuum. Okay, let me gently pour. Ooh, it's pretty. Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm making a mess. Do it better than me, everybody, do it better than me. Okay. I don't want to do too much because I don't want it to completely cover the trees. Ooh. <sighs> okay. Let me test how that's going to look. Oh, I think that'll still be fun. I think that'll still be fun. Okay, so I'm going to let that be. Now what I'm going to do is put my trees in and then push this down. This is what I ruined. That's what I did. This is what I, this came installed and I don't think it was supposed to become installed, but I couldn't get it out, which is a testament to when you do get it in, it's hard to get out. So that gives me assurance that once I have this in there that, you know, obviously it's gonna stay put, but I was using this to get out my little insert here and that's how I bent my tool, so. Oh well, but I'm gonna just pick up some new ones. You could also hot glue this shut, which, should I do that? Let me see. I'm just gonna hot glue a little bit. Mamas who have small children totally understand where I'm going with this right now, right? I'm just gonna hot glue that. Okay, look, oh, 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 oh. <gasps> How cute! That is so simple and cute. I thought, um, I thought maybe I would regret not doing the the water. 
you know, to, to make it a traditional globe, but that is so stinking cute. Did I just make my favorite thing this holiday season? I don't know, I'll have to, I'll have to save my judgment until I've finished. So now it's a little top heavy, so. The next thing I'm gonna do is I was gonna add some snowflakes around the outside of the globe. Should I do that or should I leave it just? I don't know. I, I'm really more simple. Let's try putting one on because we can always peel it off. Before I do that though, I'm going to add a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Whoops, things are, things are falling everywhere. Okay, so rubbing alcohol. Sorry for the extra little noise. I have transfer tape skydiving off the table here. Okay. I'm just taking away any oils from my hands that may be on that surface or any dust or dirt that could be there from just handling it. I'm going to try just with maybe one and see if I like it. And I might save these for another project just because I really am kind of liking the simplicity of this. And I, I feel like the the snow, just to give you an idea of my thought process here, the glittery of the snow is kind of the statement. So I'm wondering if the snowflakes are just going to take away from that. So let me try. I'm going to be a rebel and I'm going to do this with tweezers, I think, but you can do it with transfer tape. And I might regret this, but we'll see. Okay, that came off really nice. Ooh, wait a second though. Wait a second, that might be darling. Oh, and those lay down so nice. <gasps> okay, I, I'm gonna add, I'm adding the snowflakes. That's, that's way too cute. I'm just mixing that snow at the bottom so that my, um, it's, so it's heavier at the bottom and it actually sits in that base. So you can use transfer tape if you'd like. I just really think these are easy enough to use just tweezers on or maybe even your fingers. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I found these in Cricut Design Space. They came in a trio. So I printed off nine, or cut out nine, excuse me, but it was only three files, if that makes sense. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Okay, I, I really like that. I feel like it's almost easier to get them very, very straight with the tweezers, because we're working on a curved surface. So I'm actually gonna recommend, <laughs> recommend you try it. Ah, oh, so cute. Okay, I love it. Let me just keep going around and around and I will show you in the end what these look like. I think these are just a little bit over an inch and they are the perfect size. And they're laying down really nice. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and keep decorating and then I'll show you the final look. Okay, here's the last little one. I actually ditched the the tweezers for the most part and just kind of kept them handy for more of a little aid if I needed to straighten them out, but I'm finding my fingers to be super easy with this. And I am so proud of this. This is so easy in terms of a craft. It's just a very easy idea, very inexpensive. 
and I think it is going to be a cute little crowd pleaser. Plus you can make these in bulk. I didn't even, I feel like I used maybe half of this. So you could get two globes out of one. You could also put these in, maybe I'll save these and put these in some ornaments because that's just so pretty. But here is my final, make sure I don't have a bubble. Here's my final little look. And so I did about a little over an inch on those snowflakes and I have a total of nine. So that can kind of help you with reference of how many you might want to cut out. How sweet. I love this. It's so fun. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. I love that this is almost entirely a Dollar Tree item, um, except for the little trees and vinyl, of course, but it looks more expensive than that, doesn't it? I love it. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next craft, but I might have to just keep this over here on my desk so I can look at it. It's so sweet. Okay, let me go ahead and... I thought I was only doing six crafts, so I thought I was almost done, but I am not. I, I have eight to do today. I'm going to do a cute little arrow sign. Again, this is from the Bullseye's Playground in Target, that little dollar area, but this is a $3 item, and it comes completely bare just like the little stick here on the bottom the little stake but I painted this with chalk paint white red white obviously and then I'm going to put some little decor on this now I picked up a bunch of these at the beginning of the season because I made one for fall and then Halloween as well and I just really loved how they turned out and how cute they were so I definitely wanted to do one once more for Christmas time. Let me move some of these things. If I have too much stuff, it makes me a little, I don't know, maybe anxious when I have too much going on on my desk. Okay, so I'm just going to weed out, whoops, my little E. There we go. So I just went ahead, I'll try to link the fonts that I decided on for this project. I did a mixture of them just because I like, I think I used two different fonts, um, but I, I liked how they looked when they're just kind of mismatchy personally, but you can do whatever you'd like. So this first one says North Pole and there we go. Go through and get all the little middles out. Okay, so this had a lot of little inside pieces, but it makes it just look so pretty. Now this is not a Christmas font, but it sure looks like it to me. So this is kind of a all year round font, but I just loved how kind of Christmassy it looked. So this one says North Pole, and I'm going to put it on the red. And then again, I'm going to go with this shimmer vinyl. And I have some pieces for my little white arrows. So I'm trying to remember what I did. I think it was ice skating and sledding hill. Just going nice and slow, making sure I account for all the little eye dots to the eyes. And that I don't miss anything. I think I got, yep. Okay, now grab the middle sections. I've been trying to do, weed out my middles first, but it's something new to me, so it's hard for me to remember. Do you know how when you build a habit, you, it's hard to break it? So I'm so used to doing that outside part first, but this actually we did really well. Sometimes it's easier to weed the middles first just because there's more surface area so it doesn't tend to rip up the entire design if that makes sense. Okay, I think I got everything. This one's just sticking here. Okay, very cute. Now let's grab some transfer tape and lay it all down. I'm grabbing a new piece. You can feel free to grab a used piece if you'd like. This is such a low tack transfer tape that I don't tend to worry about reusing it because sometimes it doesn't reuse as well. It does reuse, but 
for me, it's worth a new piece. And if you saw my last video, I finally opened my new roll, which my previous roll lasted me two years. So that just gives you an idea of how long you can get out of a roll of tape. And I, I feel like I craft quite a bit, so maybe not as much as most people, but I, I craft quite a bit. Okay. Okay, just grabbing some scissors here and trimming those pieces apart so I can lay them down separately. Okay, so I think I'm going to do ice skating on the top. I'm just centering it where I'd like it there. Okay, that looks good. And peel up. The reason I'm doing this really light transfer tape is because I feel like it is just a little bit more forgiving on those surfaces that are painted. So I don't want to disrupt that paint that I just put down. I did paint it a couple days ago, but still. Okay, now taking my time with this font. Although that's coming up very nicely. Whoop. Come on. North pole. So you can, of course, use any font. Write anything you'd like. I kind of liked going in this fun direction with it. I'll scrape. And, ooh, that looks really nice. Very cute. Okay, and then Sledding Hill. Just some fun little winter words that I thought were cute for a little sign. And there we go. Okay, final look. So inexpensive. You saw how small those pieces of vinyl were too, so make sure you are checking out your scrap bin if you need help learning how to save your scraps and maybe how to organize them so that you can keep your crafting costs down. I'll link a video of how I did that. And I just love how this turned out. I think it's so pretty and very festive. I like the colors too. Okay, let's go ahead and I think I need to do a heat press craft again. So I put that back on. I'm going to do some stockings and then a couple other things and I think we're done. Okay, so I found these cute little stockings at the Target um, dollar stop again. This should just be the Target <laughs> video although not all of it was from target but i found these for three dollars there i just really really loved the look of them and i thought they were really fun and i wanted to put the kids initials on there so i thought it'd be just a cute little festive thing and i'm going to use a really pretty patterned iron on so I have this pattern iron on. It's really pretty. I thought that would just be so fun on my little stockings. And so I just did the kids initials. I just found a font in Cricut Design Space. Unfortunately for this one, I don't remember the font that I used, but I kind of kept it and searched for something just a little bit more traditional. And I really liked just a very basic traditional look for these. So I'm going to trim these apart and then we'll take them over to the press and get them all pressed onto our stockings here. So one, two, and three. Okay, let's go ahead and, oh, those are going to be so cute. Let's go ahead and go to the press and get these all pressed on. Okay. Couple little liners from my last project. Put those away. Okay, so I'm gonna preheat and I'm gonna let the little tassel and the loop fall off of the press. That way I need to, um, that way it stays as flat as possible. 
I'm going to obviously loosen my pressure quite a bit because this is much thicker. And that's good. Okay. Ooh, that feels really good. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do, I'll do the C first. And with the pattern, it doesn't have the sticky back, so it is going to move around quite a bit, which is quite annoying. I wish they would just have everything have a sticky back on it, but it is what it is. So I just want to let you know that so that you are aware that you need to be a little bit more careful. You can put the heat resistant tape on there if you need to study it, but once it's on there, it should be, should be fine. So I'm going to let that go for 30 seconds. And I'm really quickly checking the heat guide. It says cool peel. So I wanted to double check what my instructions were there. Okay. So I'm going to let that cool. And I'm going to set this here just for a second so that when I'm getting my next one ready, I can kind of get them... Well, I'm going to need to preheat this anyway. I want to reference the one before. I should probably also do a little lint roll. Um, I want to reference them together so that I get them placed quite evenly from the top. That way when they're hanging next to each other, they're all uniform. That was something that would probably really drive me crazy if I didn't quite get that right. Okay, so that looks good to me. You could get a measuring tape as well. But that looks good to my eye. Okay. Again, letting that first stocking just cool. Okay. Press and check on this one. I'm going to just put the iron on on the cold counter and let that cool down. Oh, there we go. Perfect. I might give it another, it's it's completely on there, but like I was showing you earlier with my other things, I kind of just like to zap it one more time. So I'll just kind of have a little assembly line here going. We'll let this cool, we'll zap this another time, and then we'll do our final one. Okay, so can you tassel? Let that cool. Let this get its final. A little press just about five seconds that's all it really needs optional but something I just have started to kind of build in okay and that's still cooling let's get a reference point over here for our last one oh we gotta preheat first I'm all jumbled I need more I need more coffee. Okay. There we go. Pretty heat. I am so in love with this press. I am so, so in love with it. At first, I thought, you don't need something like that. And need is, you know, do I need it? No, but I love it. It has made iron-on crafts just so quick and easy. It's always set up. But I, I am very happy with it. Okay, so that's where I want that to be. Then that's cool so we can get that all peeled up. Okay. Perfect. So I'll give this a little bit more heat. Those are so cute. I'll show you on the counter um, the final look. And we'll be all set. Okay. You cool. You get a little more heat. Just about five seconds. Make sure that liner goes back over your iron on. That way... You just protect your iron-on and you protect your press. Again, I'm just letting that cold counter come into contact with that iron-on. It just helps draw out that heat a lot quicker. 
and cool it down. Oh, that was a lot longer than five seconds. I got distracted. Okay. Peel. Place back over. One more press. Ooh, I got distracted with that other one. But it looks good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay, there we go. And they're all done. Okay, so here is the final look for these stockings. How cute. And I love the little tassel right here. So you just kind of pull this down. How sweet. Now one of my stockings is a little bit ripped down here, so I'm going to have to have a domestic moment <laughs> and get that fixed. Oh my goodness. I'm not, I'm not very good with hand sewing things, so I'll have to be patient with myself, but I'm, I'm positive I can get that, that fixed. But how cute are these? Three dollars, a little bit of iron on, and I think these are so fun and festive. I think they're just going to be beautiful. I also really like the pattern on the pattern. I really like that look. It gives just a, a fun, different look, but of course you could do a solid, you could do a glitter. Originally I was going to do a glitter, um, red glitter, but then I saw this polka dot red and game over. So cute. Okay. I think I have one more. Oh, I saved the cutest for last. Okay. This next craft has been on my heart and I'm just, I'm completely, completely tickled to get this done and to enjoy it this year. So let's, let's go ahead and share the last thing I'm going to do. Okay. So I, this isn't an original idea. Um, I'm not sure the original origin of the idea, but I think I saw it on Pinterest. I can't remember, but I am making, oh, I cut this off, but actually I'm using something different for the little loops. I found these little ornaments at Dollar Tree. I'm going to snip off the little tassels because I'm going to do something different. And they come in a two pack for a dollar. So wonderful, wonderful deal. What I'm going to do is I am going to put each of my kids monograms on there. So I don't have four kids. I'm going to just gonna have <laughs> not an announcement or anything, just three. Okay. So I'm going to put their little monogram on the front, the year on the back. Then I'm using ribbon and I measured all of my kids. I got this ribbon at Dollar Tree as well. And I'll share a little bit more about this in a second. Um, I measured all of the kids and I am going to cut the exact length of their height and then that ribbon will go in each of their ornaments. So the inside of their ornament will have the ribbon that is their exact height in 2021. Does that make sense? Am I explaining that correctly enough? I'm so excited to do this that I feel like I'm tongue tied because I'm just really, really ready to enjoy this craft because this is just something that is going to make me so happy to see on my tree. So I will, I have all the kids' measurements. I will go ahead and cut those in a moment. But first I'm going to get all of these all prepped. Now, these are very small, so I'm not sure in my new cradle if they are going to, oh, they do work pretty well. No, they do work pretty well because they're so small that I wasn't sure if they were going to grip very well, but they, they are working pretty good. So I'm going to take out this top part and because I'm going to put, I'm going to put the ribbons inside. Okay. What I'm going to do again, I got this on Amazon, this little bottle. I added my own words, rubbing alcohol inside, just going to wipe all of those down helps that vinyl just stick a lot better. I'm going to do this first and let that have time to dry. I'm just going to place them like this. And these are a plastic. So you can go for glass if you'd like. Okay. There we go. Now I think that the longest part of this entire craft was deciding on the perfect monogram font. It took me 
at least a day, maybe two days, of just searching and searching for the perfect monogram font. I wanted it to be really loopy and a pretty script because I just felt like it was very pretty for the season. So I will link it down below because when I found it, I squealed. And I know that sounds a little dramatic, but when I finally found it and I ha was able to stop searching, it was just so perfect. I was so happy. So I will link the one I'm using down below. It's going to be one of my new favorites. So I did each of the kids monogram. Now a traditional monogram would have the first initial on the left, the last name initial in the middle, and the middle name initial on the right. That's how it's traditionally done. And so I have, let me trim this off. One is done. I'm gonna have to go back through for those middles, but one is done. I can't wait for you to see it. It's so cute. I have to admit when I was designing these, I looked at my husband and I said, is it 2021? I asked my husband that in December, I've had 11 months to get on board, 11 months to get on board with 2021 and I still have to think it through. It's just, usually people do that in, sorry, I'm trying to turn my press off. Um, usually people do that the first two months of the year, right? You're accidentally always writing the last, the last year on everything. But usually, you know, by February, end of February, you got it figured out. I asked him in December. It says 2021, right? He goes, uh, yeah. Whew. I don't know. I guess it's just been a couple years, right? Has it just been a couple years for us all? Okay, look how cute. You'll get to see him really good in a second. But this, when I found it, I just made my heart happy. I found it on uh, font bundles. So in font bundles, you can type in the word you want to use or the monogram you want to use in a little box below the, the item, the, below the font, and it will show you an example of what it would look like. So what I did is I put all of my kids monograms and then I copied and pasted it every single time. So I just, every time I found a font, I would paste it in the little tester and I have to fix this too and then I could see an example of what it would look like and that's how I decided which one I would like so you just kind of scroll down you'll see it there it gives you a little test area to to test out the font how cute is this so now I'm trimming these apart because I'm going to do their monogram on the front and I'm going to do their or the year 2021 now that I'm on board, um, I'll do that on the back. Okay, so everybody's having fun upstairs. It's my turn to go join them. Okay, so transfer tape. Placing them all on there. Reuse if you'd like. I told you in my last video, I save I save on crafting costs elsewhere so that I can have fresh transfer tape whenever I like. It's just my preference. We all have our preferences, right? Preferences. Okay. And scraping those down. And then we'll just take our time. Now I'm going to do some relief cuts in my transfer tape just because I'm placing something more flat on a square surface. So let me show you the first one and then I'll speed it up and finish the last two. So I'm going to take off my liner, take my transfer tape and just do little relief cuts all around in a circular little motion there. Being careful, of course, not to cut into your vinyl. Now this just helps that transfer tape take on the shape of the ornament or whatever curved surface you're doing. Look how nice that is. It's sitting there just 
just so nicely. It is on the smaller side for this though. I, it's just barely sitting in there. So bigger things will obviously be better, but it is working. Okay. Make sure I like that side. And then for something like this, I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to go towards the edge. Just laying it down. It can be really, really tricky. So be patient with yourself. Ooh, I have to fix that middle one a little bit. Oh, so cute. Okay, I want to fix this middle one just a bit. Just to get it a little bit flatter. might have to kind of snip the vinyl a little bit. Okay. There is my first one. So cute. And then the back, I will... Oh, it's nice that you can see through that. So you can see exactly where the back would be. Oh, what is happening here? Okay, now I don't know that I will need relief cuts too much on this one. Let me try without. It would help if that transfer tape was as straight as the design. That bothers my eye. Okay. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go through with my fingers there and help that lay down. Take your time on ornaments. They, they can frustrate you, but if you take your time, they're doable. They're not something you're gonna wanna rush. I need to fix my two. Ooh, but the other ones look really, really nice. Just gonna kinda peel that up just a little and lay down, okay. 2021 on the back. That's a little hard to see just because you can see the, the other design on the other side, but um, once that ribbon's in there, it's going to look really, really good. Okay, let me add my little one with slanty there. Okay, let me add the monograms to the next two, and then I will show you the ribbon part, and then I'll put the new ribbons on the top. So I'll just go ahead and work on these real quick, and... And we'll move on to the final little part.
Okay, so those are done. Now I did do some little relief cuts in the actual vinyl just to kind of layer them on top of one another and then it looked flawless. So if there was a bubble, I just snipped it. I snipped um, where it was creasing and then laid one on top of the other so that it would be seamless. And I'm really happy with how those turned out. I've never done that before, but I kind of was just crafting on the fly and it ended up looking really, really nice. Okay, so now I need to get my measuring tape and I want to, oh, hello. You need a year on the back of you. Goodness, I almost forgot that. Um, now I need to grab my measuring tape. I have all of the kids' heights in inches and that was comical, getting, getting their heights. <laughs> That's really fun. Okay. There we go. Okay, let me grab my measuring tape. Okay. So, what I did is I found this at Dollar Tree. Now you can use any um, ribbon that you'd like. For this, I wouldn't recommend this ribbon for anything other than something like this. Um, it's kind of papery. It's not papery. It's um, not very fabric-y. So when you when you try to tie it into a bow, it's it's not as flexible. So I just wanted to warn you about that. It's very pretty ribbon, but it's not like bow ribbon, if that makes sense, in my opinion. You may be able to do it much better, but it's just kind of, it's so flimsy that I feel like it doesn't fold well and it kind of creases kind of crazy but for something like this where it's just going to be a little loopy inside of something it's perfect so what i wanted to do was i wanted to have each child have their own kind of glitter color and they think they have a red and green as well um, i just really liked the softness of the gold and or the silver gold in the white so i'm going to do my oldest first and she is 46 inches. So I'm going to, ooh, get 46 inches of ribbon. Whoop. Take my time here so it's perfect. Oh, that glitter is coming off. Ooh! You know how I feel about that? It's glitter vacuum time. I'm gonna bring it out and see if I like it. Okay, 46 inches, right there. Okay, there's one. So what I'm gonna do is I just wanna roll it maybe around my finger here. and get it really tight so that I can fit it through the opening of the ornament. And then it hopefully, hopefully we'll just kind of unravel prettily, prettily, is that word prettily? Doesn't sound right at all. Beautifully, let's say beautifully. Hopefully it will unravel beautifully inside. That's already too big. So let's see if we can tighten it. It's gonna tighten, tighten, tighten as I can. Oh, the glitter's going everywhere. It's all for a good cause. It's all for a good cause. I don't like glitter. Okay. Let's see here. Is that going to fit? Not even close. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of Cone that up if that makes sense and just kind of fit it in as it <laughs> fit it in as fit it in as I can. Getting all tongue tied. Okay, just kind of let it go in there as I can get it. And then whoop, there we go doing it. Take my time. There we go. Oh, it's pretty. It's just going to kind of be like a little curl in there. 
Okay. <sighs> that is exactly how I hoped. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to kind of shake. <gasps> look. Oh, that's how I hoped it would look. Just kind of like a little curly in there. And then the back 2021. <gasps> Darn cute. Okay, let me see. All right, let's see. Here's my little glitter vacuum. Oh, 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 that satisfying sound of like things being picked up. Okay. Okay. I am here for it. It's the first time I've used my little glitter vacuum. Okay. Well, you, sir, you, sir, are going to be my new bestie. Okay. There may be hope for glitter after all, because that was adorably fun. Does anyone like else, like when you're um, vacuuming and you hear that like sound when it's picking up stuff? It's just so satisfying. I mean, obviously you're not thrilled that that's on your floor, but it's so satisfying. Okay, the next child is 40 inches. Oh my gosh, I have to go double check. I can't get this wrong. Okay, I have to go check. Uh, 40 inches for my next one right there and because I am perfectionist perfect okay I'm kind of excited that there's glitter falling everywhere so I can do the vacuum again okay 40 inches oh you know what I wanted to use I'm gonna reuse this for something different I wanted to use the white for the next one. I know that doesn't matter, but to me it does. I had an idea that I would use the white for my middle and the silver for my little boy. Okay. Trying again here. 40. Right on the nose. Okay. Let's see, not this, but this one. Okay, so I'm gonna try that rolling technique again. And it's almost time for a coffee break again. And then if you just kind of pull, kind of tightens up. There we go. I bet the babies. I can fit right in. He's a whopping 26 inches, so you might be able to just do his super easy. Save the easiest for last. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I, that white shimmer is so pretty. Okay, make sure it's the right child. And I'm just going to kind of cone it and let it kind of fall in, in a loop. Okay, there we go. Then it kind of gets like a mess towards the end, but I'm just gonna kind of roll it in there. How cute is this idea? And then you have the year on the back so you know exactly the year that they were. There's also on Pinterest a really cute saying that you can put on a piece of cardstock and then just attach it to the uh, hanger, sorry, the hanger of the ornament. It says something like, this is how tall I was this year. It's a cute little poem. I, I can't recreate create it creatively but it was really cute look how cute that looks that is so sweet so it just kind of like rolls on in there obviously that one doesn't have as much contrast but it's so sweet and in person you can see it much better okay so there's the second little roll and then oh you know what I can reuse this uh -huh. duh I can reuse this and make it shorter for my little guy okay 
You can't make a ribbon longer, but you sure can make it shorter. So 26 inches is right there. Yep. Bloop. Okay, there we go. So I didn't waste after all. And let's roll that up. Hold on, let's take a vacuum break. Let's do it. And there we go. Oh my goodness gracious. That is so satisfying. I felt a little ridiculous buying this, but I don't feel ridiculous right now. Oh, that satisfying little noise of dirt coming up. Okay, not dirt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, glitter. Glitter, glitter. Okay. So 26, was this my ribbon? Now I put it over in a pile, so I wanna make sure it's the right one. Does anyone else find like vacuum lines on their floor to be the most gratifying thing ever? I'm kind of, I'm kind of silly like that. I find, I find laundry and vacuuming to be very relaxing. So, but I love like vacuum, like carpet lines. Oh my gosh, I find that so, I don't know. Where you have to like vacuum yourself out of the room because you don't want footprints on the carpet. <laughs> Please say I'm not the only one or I'm just gonna feel like a, a goofball. But hey, it's me, it's what I like. Okay, so, oh, almost, not quite. Actually, if I would have gotten that tighter, I could have done that, but. Okay, having that fall in there. And then of course you can use any type of ribbon. So if you want even a patterned ribbon, that would be really pretty as well. I just really liked this glittery look because I wanted it to look all glittery on the tree. And I also liked how classic and timeless it was. Sometimes ribbons, I feel like if they have a pattern on them, they can take on the year that the style was in style, if that makes sense. Just gonna let that settle in there. Cute, I want this one little ribbon to kind of go the other way. Here I am using my weeding tool again for not a weeding tool uh, job, but the weeding tool is such a universal tool. I feel like you can use it for so many things. <laughs> okay, oh, there we go. So I like how it just kind of curls in there. See how it's just like a little curly cue? That's so, so neat. 2021, and then the monogram. Oh, that monogram. I'm I'm actually happy it took me, or not happy. I'm actually okay with the fact that it took me multiple days to find that because it turned out so good. Okay, here we go. Maybe the title of this video should be Bethany Vacuums because that was so fun. Okay, now I wanna put on some different ribbon. I really liked this ribbon. I just thought the color would be so pretty. Now the original was this, I don't even know what this is called, but I don't, I didn't like it because it, it kind of looks cheap to me and also because, look at the glitter on my hands. Um, can I vacuum my hands? The glitter, um, or the, I don't want silver with gold or silver with a white. I just, I don't like mixing my metallics, if that makes sense. Not that white is metallic, but you get what I'm saying. Um, so I decided to do a red. Also, I kind of liked the idea that it had a pop of color. So what I'm going to do is, without bending these, I'm going to place these back inside gently. Whoops, oh, I almost had it. Okay, okay. And then I'm going to just loop this through and just tie it. I'm not gonna do anything overly complicated. I'm just going to tie right at the top. 
just as any any of them would be okay yep perfect it's exactly how I hoped it would be okay just like that and then of course I'm going to snip the little ribbon hairs there we go okay so there is the little I think that's so cute so cute okay I'll do the other two and then we'll be all done okay so so many wonderful things got accomplished today and I just feel like I have a very full heart because I've been putting together little task lists of crafts I want to do this season and to actually see it come to life is just really gratifying and um, I just love how everything turned out so uh, first of all how darling these are so sweet I love the little ruffle at the bottom and I just think the girls are going to love them plus they're just gonna look so cute as we make our really yummy cookies this might be one of my favorite things that I have done and you know me I'm gonna say that time and time again but I think that's also like really exciting because if you keep creating things that you like even more than the next one then that's what makes crafting really exciting but how cute did this turn out hopefully that there we go and I really like the addition of the snowflakes at first I wasn't really quite sure but I really love that I think that's so pretty this would be a really fun little gift to give as well. It's just going to be decor at our house. Then the little sign. How sweet did this turn out? I really, really, really love pairing different fonts. It just adds a really fun visual interest. I love that. And the shimmery, the shimmery vinyl is so pretty. The stockings turned out really fun. And the tassel. Let's see, did those focus very well? Come on, little guy. Maybe it's this little tassel that's holding us up here. Hopefully those focus. But anyway, those turned out so sweet. I love the patterned look. Just so fun. Okay, and then the ho-ho-ho little nesting houses. So cute. Bloop. And I'm not sure which order I will do those in. But I think they're just so fun so cute joy to the world ah oh, so fun look at how that just shimmers and glitters so cute and you could do anything on this but I love the little addition of you know a different type of fabric for this little loop I think that's so fun and then my favorite my favorite are the ornaments so sweet there we go and I'd lift all three of them up. Hopefully I can maybe get all of them in the same one. There we go. <laughs> How cute are these? There's all the little monograms on that side. They're just so sweet. Of course, the little rescuer of the day, the little mini vacuum. I'm so excited. I've had this on my shelf forever. Haven't used it because I'm so terrified of glitter, but I kind of feel like I am tiptoeing into the glitter world. It may be okay just because we have nice accessories that are helping us. And then I hope these also really helped inspire you. I'm really happy with this. This is the first time I have crafted with my little caddies. And I just like that there's a place right close to me to I, where I can just put them in their place in a home. But they're also really quick to grab when I need them. Because usually I'm grabbing off of my board, which is completely fine. It's not like I'm walking a mile to get to them. However, I really like that they are just within a little arm's reach. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this inspired you in some way. Let me know what you're crafting in the comments down below. Let me know which one of these was your favorite. Please, please, please make these. I just think they're so fun. Um, other ideas, I'm trying to think, even if you didn't have any, you know, meaning to the ribbon inside, just the idea of putting a little curly ribbon inside would be so cute and then maybe putting your family name on there. Um, you know what you could do is, unless you are married like a year or two years, then it would be very short, but you could do an inch for every year you're married. That would be cute. So if you say you are married 10 years, you could put 10 inches of a ribbon in here. Of course, it's if you are like brand newlyweds, then it would be very, very, very um, short. But you could put that snow in there too. You could put the little snow that we put in the globe in there too. So 
I hope this inspired you in some way. My heart is so full. I'm going to go put these on the tree and get this all edited and ready for you guys to be inspired with. And I hope that you all are just having fun crafting for Christmas. So I will all, I will, ugh, I will see you all in the next video. I'm so excited that I can't talk. I'll see you all in the next video.